Let's take a close look at EasyCam's feature recognition, hole recognition, and tool-based machining to understand how you are going to benefit from these features in your programming. First we visit the Easy Wizards tab, then select Feature Recognition. Next I'm going to select Hole Recognition for all coordinate systems. After EasyCam analyzes the solid model, you are provided with path and boundary curves identified by color. Red, an open or closed pocket. Yellow, an inside or outside contour. Blue, a hole, facing boundary, or an island. So at this time, I will add machining work steps to program the part complete. After, I will discuss how tool-based machining came together. Let's talk about tool-based machining and how we got here. So we'll make a contour work step by going into the category. Then we're going to choose a one inch diameter end mill where all my preferences are stored. You'll notice that the depth is zero because when you use feature recognition, the curve is put in place. Notice the yellow boundary curve is at full depth and that is stored right here above the update work step which is a good reference. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Verify our machining. Take a look at the additional depth. And we have a lead in and lead out and an overlap. That was stored in my template. And those templates can be modified as I discuss later on in this video. You can see here, these are my preferences. Now we'll generate the outside pocket with the islands. We'll use high speed machining. Half inch diameter end mill. Now it produces two types of operations. You have one where the tool stays within the boundary and the second where it exceeds the boundary as a facing pass. So we want to stay inside the boundary and select our islands. Verify our machining. Now we'll produce our pockets at different depths. Now that was
was the first pocket chosen, so we're going to add the other two. And if you look inside the work step, you can see our depth is zero. EasyCam automatically detected the depth for all three, and they are different. You've already seen a pocket with islands, so I'm going to skip that part and move on to our last operation, drilled holes. You can see they're linked together, meaning that they have the same diameter, same start height, and overall depth. When the curve machining wizard appears, you'll see diameter, start height, and depth listed here. Now let's say I machined a half inch deep pocket. Well, I don't want the drill to start feeding from the top. That's cutting a lot of air. So my Z value in that case would be a negative 0.5. Here you'll see there's three types of drilling operations. Chip break, where the tool feeds into the hole and retracts just enough to break the chip, keeping the drill in the hole. Then you have deep hole, where the tool retracts completely out of the hole, wraps back in where it left off. Then you have drill, where it just simply feeds to the bottom and wraps out. We'll pick our drill. Now the depth is zero. We want to populate that by updating the work step because that's going to give us the depth and the overall start height. We've already selected the diameter. Back in the wizard for a minute, I just want to bring up that you can go to your template and make additional operations just like we did with the pocket with the facing pocket option as well. So in your template, you might add a spot drilling operation. You can turn them on and off by simply checking them. So now I want to go into the, the work step manager and we'll check our tool numbers. Now in our templates, I listed all the tool numbers as tool one. So to change them here, our one inch is going to be tool one. Our half inch will be tool two and our drills three and four. Then you post your code and you'll be all set. Let's take a look at tool based machining without a model. First I'll build our path curves. We're going to use tool based machining on flat geometry. It does not require a solid model. I'm going to start by roughing our stock up to our part boundary. We're going to use a facing strategy because we are going to overlap the stock. Now we'll overlap the part boundary up to a couple of islands. Now I failed to include the islands, so we go to add machining. Now we'll cut our pockets. That will be a standard pocket. We'll contour the center hole. Now for the holes, we're going to use hole recognition. Found the different diameters. And because it's not a solid model, it only gives us the diameter of the hole.
the diameter can be changed on the fly. Now we'll go to the work step manager, make sure our tools are set correctly. I have the tool number and diameter side by side. Half inch tool will be number two. Quarter inch will be three and our drills will be four and five. Verify all to recalculate our changes. our estimated machine time, and a full 3D preview. And you can see we use tool-based machining for the entire part. Fast, easy, and consistent. Let's take a look and see how easy it is to make changes to our tool-based machining. I'm going to create our curve and we're going to contour the outside perimeter of this part. Double click, we get our curve machining wizard and we have a category. Categories are named by operation. I'm going to choose a one inch diameter end mill. Hit OK and your preferences are loaded in the work step in the list box at the top here. You'll see a spindle RPM of 8500 and a tool number, tool number one. Let's say I had a Haas and my max spindle RPM was 10,000 and for that one inch diameter end mill we wanted to use tool number three. So what we'll do is we'll go to the Windows Explorer I'm going to the C drive, that's where the default location of EasyCam is installed. EasyCam W. Come down to EasyCam 28, that's just the version we're on currently. And down at the bottom you'll see Work Step Combo Inch and Work Step Combo Metric. This is where all of your templates are stored. So I, rather than modify the one inch tool in the contour, which is kind of permanent, or you'd have to change based on different circumstances. So I'm going to create a host directory by copy and paste. Rename. Open our new host directory find our one inch diameter end mill. Now I'm going to click, right click, and open with. Typically you open a 3DP file with the EasyCam CAD CAM application. You can make that default in Windows. Now notice we don't have any geometry or curves stored here. Uh, you don't want those loaded in on top of your existing geometry and curves. So it'll be blank. So let's modify the contour. Change the spindle RPM to 10,000. We'll make this tool number three. And we're going to save our changes. We can go back to our previous document. I'm going to deactivate it by right clicking on the contour at the top here. Double click. Our category is now going to be the Haas. And we're going to choose that one inch diameter end mill. Take a look. And we get our max RPM of 10,000 and tool number three. So that's how easy it is to modify tool-based machining.